Okay, so now we, in the last section, we learned about the derivative. In this section, um, we're going to start off with the formal definition of a derivative and calculate some derivatives and see if we can come up with some derivative rules. Then hopefully by the end of this we'll have a whole bunch of rules that we can use and we don't ever have to do the formal definition of a derivative again. So here we go. Quick reminder, what is the formal definition of derivative? Does everybody remember? It was the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by, and the simplified version just has an h down here, um, but to remind you where it came from, it's f, of, it's x plus h minus x, because it's just the slope formula, and the x's subtract away, leaving you with the simplified version of just that. Okay, so let's use the formal definition of derivative to find the derivative of this function. Okay, so we're going to do the derivative of f of x equals x. So to be able to fill in the slope formula, I, uh, to fill in uh, that, that equation up above, I need to find what is f of x plus h. Now, remember, what we're really saying here is just substitution. So if I said to you, find f of 3, what does that mean? Everywhere I have an x in my, fu in my function, replace it with the number 3. So it would be this. So in this one, it's relatively straightforward because f of x plus h, well, I have to replace my x with x plus h. All right. Then uh, to also fill in the other part of my numerator, I need f of x. Well, that was just x. So now I'm ready to fill this in. The limit as h approaches 0. All right, so the first part I need to fill in here is x plus h minus, now the other part we got, which is x. And you can see that's coming from right here. So the x plus h gets filled in right there. Then the x from here got filled into that half. And so we can call our coordinate. You can see this is what I'm doing. The yellows, let me get rid of this yellow here. The yellows are all matching up. The yellow highlights, the blue highlight there matches up with the blue highlight here. So that's where everything's coming from. Okay, then we all still need the denominator of divided by h. So now, now comes algebra. Yay, algebra. So we cannot drop this limit notation until we're ready to substitute an h for 0. Now keep in mind, when we do formal definitions, that's all we're trying to do is just get to a point where I can substitute in 0 for h. Right now I can't do it because if I substitute in a 0, I'd end up dividing by 0. That doesn't work. So let's algebraically work our numerator and hope that we get something that's nice. So here we go. Um, these parentheses really aren't doing much for me, so I can just kind of drop them. So it gives me x plus h minus x, and hey, that's pretty nice because that x subtracts with that x. So now I'm just left with the limit as h approaches 0 of h divided by h, and we all know h divided by h is equal to 1. I don't need this limit notation anymore because there's no h's left, so therefore I know the derivative of our function is 1. So what does that mean? If we stop and think about it, because remember, the last section we talked about derivatives and what do they mean? They are the instantaneous rate of change. They are the slope of the tangent line. Well, stop and think. This equation here is a graph of a line, right? And it's the line that looks like this because it has a intercept of 0 and it has a slope of, oh, that's right, one. So the derivative just confirmed for us what y equals mx plus b would normally show us is, remember the slope, the slope is m, the slope is the value multiplying your, your, your um, variable, and that number is 1, and that's what we got. Awesome! Okay, now, it was only that easy because our graph um, was linear. This problem, our graph is definitely not linear. Our graph, this is a quadratic, we should all hopefully know without even really thinking about it, that this is a parabola opening up. So if we start talking about tangent lines, we should hopefully be able to logically understand they are not going to be the same. Unlike the last graph where it was always that it always had a slope of one, here our slopes are all different. So therefore, when we finish our definition of derivative, we should not end up with a number like one. So let's do this again. So to fill into our formal definition of derivative, we need our two pieces. We need to know what is what is f of x plus h. Okay. So that means in my function here, I need to replace everywhere I have an x, I need to replace it with x plus h. And there we go. That's the whole function. So now let's simplify this. Let's 
let's just um, and not distribute, but it's it's uh, um, expand. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Let's expand this. So, and for those of you who are not quite sure, just remember this is the same thing as x plus h times x plus h. So therefore, when I expand the expression, some of you know it as FOIL, um, we're going to get something that looks like x squared plus 2xh uh, plus h squared. All right, so when I'm going to fill into my derivative formula, my, my formal definition of, definition of derivative, this is what I'm going to put in that first part. Now for the other part, we just need f of x, and my formula, we already know that's x squared. That's what we had highlighted as blue, so that's what I'm going to fill in in the second part. So now let's go ahead and fill it all in. So this would be the limit as h approaches 0. And then remember, it goes f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So f of x plus h is the yellow. So we're going to go ahead and say that's the limit as h approaches 0 of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus, now the other part is just x squared, and then all divided by h. And as a um, habit to, if these problems get a little bit bigger, a little bit harder, it might be a good idea to just kind of put parentheses around each of these. Just to remind yourself, if this term here had, um, if this function, part of the function had many terms, we would have to distribute a negative, this negative through. But since this is a monomial, we didn't have to do that. All right, so now let's algebraically simplify because right now I cannot substitute in zero for h. I'd be dividing by zero. So here we go. The limit as h approaches zero. All right, so for my numerator, these first set of parentheses really aren't doing much for me. 2xh plus h squared minus x squared all over h. Now let's look for things like terms. Oh, good news. x squared and x uh, squared are going to subtract to zero. And let's see what that does for me. So now what we're looking at here is the limit as h approaches zero of 2xh plus h squared divided by h. Hey, um, so far uh, I'm stuck still, but do you notice each term in my numerator has an h in it? So let's go ahead and factor that out. Let's pull out an h. So if I take an h out, this first term I'd be left with 2x, the second term I'd be left with h, and go ahead and do what I call the one second check. Just make sure if I multiplied this back through, would it give me back what we had up above? And the answer is yes. So that's good. We factored correctly. All right. So now, now what we'll do is we'll say, look at this, look at this. I have an h dividing by an h, which would leave me with the limit. Oops, I wanted to go back to black. The limit as h approaches zero of 2x plus h. So the good news here is yes, we still have an h in it, but do you notice I can now substitute in my h. I'm not dividing by zero anymore. So therefore, when I substitute in zero for h, I am just left with 2x. So therefore, the formal definition of derivative tells me the derivative of x squared equals 2x. So therefore, I can write that write it like this if I wanted to. f prime of x equals 2x. Huh, that's interesting. Look for a pattern here. Let's see what we can figure out. Notice the original problem started with a 2 as an exponent, and then it ended with 2 as a coefficient. And it, 2 as an exponent went down to 1 as an exponent. Hmm. Okay, let's go back and look at the previous problem. We started with 1 as an exponent, and we ended up with 1 as a coefficient. And then how many x's do we have left now in this derivative that we're left with here? Well, we remember, we could always write it as 0, because anything to the 0 is always 1. So really what we did is we started with an exponent of 1. Now we have an exponent of 0. OK, start looking for patterns. Start looking for patterns. OK, you may not see it yet. Um, let's go try. Oh, so let's go on to the next problem. All right, so number, let's try it again. And this one's cubed. So if you think you saw the pattern, if you think you saw the pattern, now is your time to give it a, so once again, if you saw the pattern, give it a shot. Okay, so um, we're gonna do it using formal definitions. So again, I need f of x plus h for my first part of the numerator. And 
So that just means I need to everywhere have an x, I'm going to replace it with x plus h. And now comes a little bit of simple simplification, and we can remember that's the same thing as x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. Now this is a um, exercise in lots and lots and lots of can you uh, distribute and can you multiply and expand. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just write down the answer for you, and you can verify that this is what you got. So it would be x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus uh, h cubed. So when you multiply all three of those out, that's what your answer should be. Okay, so then we also have to have the f of x, which is x cubed. All right, so these are our two pieces. We're going to use this for our first part of our numerator. Then we're going to use this for the second part of our numerator. We're going to subtract them. This should be lots of fun, right? Right? Everybody's loving this? I know, I know. It's math. It's great. Okay, so the first part of our numerator is going to be uh, x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed minus, then the second part of our numerator would be x cubed, and remember I recommend putting parentheses just to make sure you don't miss the distribution of that negative sign. And you'll see here that this one, it really didn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just for sake of time, I'm going to erase my parentheses since they didn't matter in this problem. And let's look for things we can combine in our numerator. Let's look for like terms. What do we have? Well, notice here we have a minus x cubed, and here we have a plus x cubed. So those will add to 0, or subtract to 0, however you want to look at it. So therefore, now I am left with 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed divided by h. And just like the logic in the last problem, we can't have h in the denominator because we're dividing by 0. So what do we notice? The good news, um, every single term in our numerator has an h in it. So let's go ahead and factor that out because that's kind of amazing. So that's going to leave us with 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared all divided by h. And the ever so fun part, those divide, which will leave us with um, something we can now substitute in 0 for, because notice we have h's left over, but um, they don't cause us to have dividing by 0 or anything that would cause the function to be undefined. So we'll substitute in 0 for each of those h's, which would give us 3x squared plus 3x times 0 plus 0 squared, and when we simplify that, we're just left with 3x squared. Awesome! So therefore, what we can say is the derivative of x cubed, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Oh, so what's the pattern? Do we notice a pattern? The 3, the exponent used to be a 3, now we have a leading coefficient of 3. Then it went from a 3 down to a 2. Hmm. All right. Um, hopefully at this point you're kind of noticing the pattern. Hopefully you're kind of noticing the pattern. Um, so, but we'll get there if you haven't seen it. We'll do one more here. We'll do one more here. All right. So for this problem, number four, this one's a hard one. I'm kidding. It's actually kind of easy. The reason why is because notice there's no x's. So therefore, when I do f of x plus h, well, that just makes four. <laughs> there's no, there's no, um, there, there's no x's to substitute in for the x's and the h's. So therefore, it's just going to be 4 and a 4. So therefore, when I substitute all this stuff in, the limit as h approaches 0 of 4 minus 4 over h, well, that just makes, what, the numerator would simplify out to be 0 divided by h. And as we all know, anything, 0 divided by anything always makes 0. Now, and remember, though, because you, you could have a little bit of a conundrum if you're thinking of it like this, 0 divided by 0. But remember, this limit is not actually reaching 0. It's approaching 0, but it's not reaching it. So it's still 0 divided by a very, very small number, which makes 0. All right, so notice this had x to the 0. Huh. Then when we did our derivative, the coefficient became 0. Well, following that pattern, what was the pattern we kind of noticed? It, oh, it, to me, it always looked like we took our exponent and subtracted 1 from it. Because we had x cubed, then it became x squared. And when we had x squared, 
here when we had x squared after we did our derivative it became x to the first so to me what I'm seeing is it kind of looks to me like the pattern is saying you take the exponent whatever it is bring it out to the front bring it to the coefficient and that and then you would multiply because 0 times 4 makes 0 and then you subtract 1 from the exponent so that will leave us with x to the negative 1 but again as we all know 0 times anything makes 0 so what rule can we have here what is our shortcut well this one is what we call the power rule and the rule in the power rule is simple it is saying you have x to the something where n is just any number it could be a fraction it could be a decimal it could be anything you want it to be as long as it's rational and real um, actually it could probably it could even be irrational it just has to be real um, and then the derivative of that function just says you bring your exponent out to the front make that your coefficient or multiply since this has a 1 it's n times 1 which makes n and you subtract 1 from your exponent and there you go so another way of notating this rule is like this what we do is we this is kind of that d, dy dx notation and what we're saying here is our function is x to the n so what we're saying is take the derivative of our function x to the n with respect to x with our variable and that would be the same thing so notice it's just another way of notating to take a derivative so let's very quickly using our rule let me do one more for you really fast we're gonna add in um, I don't know we'll call it part 4b all right so here we go let's throw in an f of x equals 3 to the x to the seventh three times x to the seventh okay so using the rule try to pause the video give it a shot all right here we go so what I'm gonna say is the derivative of our function all right so the rule says we take the 7 out to the front so this is gonna be 3 times 7 times x raised to the well 7 minus 1 makes 6 so therefore that is 21 x to the sixth there is our derivative please go ahead if you really want to go ahead and verify this using the um, formal de definition of calculus you could go absolutely if you want to you could say all right this is going to be x plus h so therefore this would be 3 times x plus h raised to the seventh that doesn't seem like a lot of fun but you can do it if you would like and then here we're going to have 3x to the 7th, um, and you can verify that that is your answer. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and break this video off here. I would recommend starting some homework, looking for things that have power rules, just to get a little bit of practice. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go on to things that have x squareds, and notice the next level here is going to have ad adding and subtracting, so we'll talk about that rule. Um, and if you want to, go ahead, carry on to the next video if you're kind of picking this up well, and, and you can probably do both of them at the same time.